Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. I'm Justin with Excelsmith. Is a single criteria in the filter function not enough for you? Do you stay up at night wondering how to add multiple criteria to your filter equations? If so, this is the video for you. In this episode of Solutions, we'll see how to use AND and OR expressions within the filter function. Let's get started. Our Excel file contains a simple data set with a few columns of labels and a few columns of random data. Our goal is to use Excel's filter function to build an equation that allows us to filter our data using multiple conditions. The filter function is available in Excel 365 and Excel 2021. We'll start with a basic filter function in cell I5. For an introduction to the filter function, check out the quick take link in the description below or click the YouTube card. Our first goal is to show all rows with an item value of either gadget or widget. When entering multiple criteria, each piece needs to be wrapped inside parentheses. First things first, we'll place our second parameter inside parentheses. If we were to press enter at this point, nothing would change. We would still have a list filtered to show just rows with an item value of gadget. To also show rows with an item value of widget, we first add a plus sign at the end of the second parameter. Next, let's enter both an opening and closing parentheses. Placing our cursor inside these new parentheses, we can add our second criteria, which will be very similar to the check for gadget. We start by selecting the range of data containing our item labels, which is C5 through C24. Then we enter an equal sign followed by widget in quotes. Pressing enter, we see our list is now filtered to show the rows with a rand item value equal to either gadget or widget. We could keep adding plus signs followed by a conditional check inside parentheses to add even more OR checks to our filter equation. In addition to filtering when one condition or another is true, we can also build a filter equation that requires multiple conditions to be true. In other words, the equation would return all values where one condition and another condition are both true. If either or both conditions are false, the row would not be returned. Setting up a filter equation that checks if multiple conditions are all true is pretty similar to the equation we built previously. The only difference is that instead of placing a plus sign between the checks in the second parameter, we use a multiplication sign. Let's replace the plus sign in our equation with an asterisk and see what happens. Our equation returns no value because there is no row with an item value of both gadget and widget. Instead, let's build an equation that returns all rows with an item of widget and a value 1 greater than 5,000. To do this, we'll change the range of the condition after the asterisk to E5 through E24. Next, we'll replace the equal sign with a greater than sign. Lastly, replace widget, including the quotes, with the number 5,000. Our filter equation now returns all of the rows with an item of gadget and a value 1 that's greater than 5,000. Like the OR scenario from earlier, we can add as many AND conditions as we want by adding more asterisks followed by a check inside parentheses. We can take things to the next level by combining these two features. Let's update our equation so that it shows all rows with an item of widget or gadget and a value 1 greater than 5,000 and a value 2 greater than 3,000. First, let's build the check for either widget or gadget. We'll start by placing a plus sign after the closing parentheses following the gadget check followed by an open parentheses. Next, select the item range, which is C5 through C24. Lastly, we'll type an equal sign followed by the word widget inside quotes. To ensure all of our OR checks happen together, we need to put parentheses around the gadget and widget checks. Let's press enter to see where we are so far. At this point, our filter equation is showing all gadgets or widgets with a value one greater than 5,000. To add our value 2 check, we start by adding an asterisk following the closing parentheses after 5000. Type in open parentheses and then select the range F5 through F24. Lastly, type a greater than sign and then the number 3000. Close the parentheses and press enter. We've done it. Our equation now shows all widgets or gadgets with a value 1 greater than 5000 and a value 2 greater than 3000. When building complex checks with the filter function, Make sure your parentheses are laid out correctly to ensure the addition and multiplication is happening in the desired order. For example, our equation is checking value 1 and value 2 for both gadgets or widgets. 
However, we could rearrange the grouping to check for all gadgets with a value 1 greater than 5000, or all widgets with a value 2 greater than 3000. Let's press undo to get back to our previous equation. Let's break down what's happening with these additions and multiplications to understand how they're working to give us our answer. We'll start by evaluating the first check, the one where we check for items with a value of gadget. After selecting this portion of the equation, remembering to include the parentheses, press F9. We get an array of trues and falses with the trues corresponding to item values of gadget and the falses corresponding to any other value. To understand why the addition and multiplication works, let's reimagine this array as ones where true and zeros where false. Let's press escape and then evaluate the second check by highlighting it and pressing F9. Again, we get an array of trues and falses. This time, the trues correspond to widgets and the falses are for anything else. Again, we'll reimagine this array as ones and zeros. If we add together each value in the top array with the value at the same position in the second array, we get a new array of ones and zeros. In this new array, we can see that the location of the ones match the location of either gadget or widget in our items list. The zeros correspond to the other values. In other words, when we add these arrays together, our final array has a 1 corresponding to all 1s in either the first or second array. Now let's take a look at the multiplication side, which is our AND condition. Like before, select the first check after the first multiplication sign and press F9 to evaluate it. Again, we'll convert this array of trues and falses to an array of 1s and zeros. Press escape and do the same thing with the check for value 2 above 3000. After pressing F9, we'll convert the evaluated array to an array of ones and zeros. Unlike when we added the two arrays, this time we're multiplying them. Now our final array only has ones corresponding to a one in both the first and the second array. If either array contains a zero, the final array contains a zero at that position since any number multiplied by zero is zero. If you want to impress your friends, what we just covered is part of the general probability rules. Big words for 10 points. A question that comes up is why we use addition and multiplication for OR and AND respectively. Why don't we use the built-in OR and AND functions? Well, let's give it a try and see what happens. Let's remove the two value checks from our equation. Next, let's type the function name OR before our gadget check. Let's clean up our parentheses and replace our plus sign with a comma. With our OR function set, let's press enter. We get a value error. Let's evaluate our OR expression to see what's going on. An easy way to do this is to select a parameter within our filter function, but not within our OR function. We can then select the include parameter. This highlights our entire OR function. With the OR function selected, press F9 to see the results. The OR function returns a single true value. Both the OR and the AND function only return a single value of either true or false. However, for the filter function to work, it needs an array of trues and falses that correspond to the number of rows entered in the first parameter. We can create pretty elaborate filter equations by utilizing the addition and multiplication signs. If you found this video helpful, give those like and subscribe buttons a press. If you want another stupendous Excel video, I recommend this one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.